Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the car. So today we are taking a viewer question. This time it's from Euclid Alexandria who writes, what are your thoughts on the importance slash usefulness of OOP uh, or object oriented programming uh, in today's software engineering landscape? Reason why I ask is because a few of the new slash trendy languages, i.e. Rust and Nim, don't place a lot of emphasis on their OOP capabilities or are less enthusiastic about that paradigm, I feel. Do you have any recommendations on resources for learning OOP best practices or proper OOP if you do feel very favorable about OOP? Do you feel that paradigm has helped you as a systems programmer? Sorry for the loaded questions. <laughs> um, so thank you for the questions. I don't know which one is supposed to be loaded, but I did enjoy saying OOP so many times. Um, I do feel quite favorable towards OOP. It's very intuitive to me personally, because uh, I tend to think of programs as um, these objects floating around in space and talking to each other uh, and poking at each other to achieve things. Uh, so it maps really nicely to the way my brain works. Now that's it's not the way I originally learned programming. I learned uh, procedural style with BASIC when I was a kid. And I only got into OOP many, many years later when I started learning C++. But even so, I, I was um, quickly became a fan of OOP because it just, um, it just feels so intuitive to me. Um, and I definitely feel that it has helped me as a systems programmer. Um, because I love the way that OOP lets me um, describe complex systems broken down into classes that have these, you know, public interfaces and private implementations, and um, I can make them talk to each other, and um, I can I can define complex uh, hierarchies and and um, object models and things. And um, just in general, this this is just really natural to me. Now, I don't know if that's because I've been doing it for so long or because it's actually natural. I don't know if I can separate those things. But for me, it, it works really well. Um, but it's not to say I have anything against uh, other paradigms like functional programming. Um, I I really haven't spent enough time with FP to have a nuanced opinion about it, so I'm just not going to try to to comment on that. Um, the only thing I will say about functional programming is that I should probably spend more time learning about functional programming. Um, because your main question is, uh, what are my thoughts on the importance and usefulness of OOP in today's landscape? Um, I think OOP is extremely widespread in reality, you know, in the, in the reality of software engineering. Um, most jobs with uh, large code bases are going to be OOP. And uh, at least in my experience, but uh, I, sh I guess I don't know that for sure. But in my experience, large code bases tend to be OOP. And um, it's, it's very useful for that. Uh, and I think, I think um, in software engineering, it's, it's not necessary to limit yourself to a single specific paradigm um, because you can always mix. Like, at least all the languages I use allow me to mix different um, things. And... Um, at least it seems it seems that way these days. Now that now that all the languages all or all the languages I use at least are being like actively developed, so it's like um, one language comes up with some some neat thing, and sooner or later it finds its way its way to other languages. Maybe just um, you know adapted to that style of of programming, but that's something that's that's really really cool. Um, I, I love what's happened with C plus plus. Uh, in the in the recent years, that it's it's like very actively developed. Although, uh, you know, if it were up to me, I would probably not spend so much time on the STL because I don't 
I don't care about the SDL. I don't use it, but but there's been a lot of a lot of neat stuff in the core language as well, which I'm happy about. Um, but anyway, um, I, I do think that that OOP is very very useful, and it will continue to be important for um, for many many people who are in software engineering, because all of these OOP code bases they're not going anywhere. Uh, anytime soon. And um, and personally, I, I think OOP is a nice style to, to code in. But, <laughs> um, but I got nothing against other ways of programming, like I say. Uh, it's just something that is really familiar and really intuitive to me. So um, you ask if I have any recommendations on resources for OOP best practices uh, and proper OOP. And I don't really know. Um, I haven't spent terribly much time um, looking into best practices. I'm, I'm not a big fan of the idea of best practices. But um, I did. I did read that book, um, "Design Patterns" by the Gang of Four, and I mean, I didn't like. I didn't like sit down and read it, but but I I had it um, for a while, and I looked into most of the patterns in the book, and and I thought that was a really nice a book, and um, it took me took me some time before I actually found use for various patterns, and I still have some of them that I would like to um, make use of someday. Um, so I guess I would recommend the book Design Patterns, just because um, it helped me, uh, I guess, expand my imagination um, a lot about C++ and how to apply uh, sort of abstract thinking to, to C++. Um, but really, like, to, to learn proper OOP, I don't know, I don't know what proper OOP really is. I guess I think of, um, of proper OOP as, like, whatever, um, whatever, like, big successful projects are doing. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to learn proper OOP, I would say go and hack on some um, big object-oriented C++ projects or big object-oriented Java projects or um, whatever other OOP language you, you're interested in. Because I think it's... I, I personally think it's better to, to learn um, practices from uh, living, breathing projects uh, instead of somebody's like weird condensed collection of, of theoretical ideas um, but that that's that's just has been my approach and it's worked really well for me like I absorbed so many awesome patterns from working on KDE and Qt and WebKit and these are the you know the best practices that I have today um, all things that I picked up by sort of osmosis while hacking on these projects rather than um, studying some list. So, yeah, I guess that's my recommendation. My recommendation is to check out the book Design Patterns um, just because I think that's a neat book. And it's a classic, really. And um, I also recommend hacking on some OOP code. Uh, some big, really big, mature OOP code. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I guess those are my my answers to your questions. Um, I think I think there's space for for all kinds of programming paradigms. Like, don't limit yourself. Um, programmers. Like, it seems to me that, that at a certain point when you get into programming, like, and you, you sort of get past the beginner stage, um, 
very often people get to this point where they somehow start to needlessly limit themselves by identifying as a specific kind of programmer. Um, and it's weird. And then it, it often takes quite a while before they realize that, wait a minute, I don't need to identify as a functional programmer or a um, JavaScript programmer or whatever specific programmer, right? Like I can also just be a programmer and um, learn all kinds of languages and paradigms and styles and things. Um, and I think, um, I guess, I don't know, maybe this, uh, it's a necessary and natural part of your evolution as a programmer, but it always, uh, it always seemed kind of counterproductive to me. <sighs> Except when I was in that phase myself, of course. <laughs> uh, then it felt really uh, necessary and important that um, that I, I should do everything with C and I should only use GPL software and um, that uh, that you know extremely specific uh, this and that uh, had to be um, done certain ways uh, and it it was it was nice to get out of that finally and um, open up again anyway um, I, I I don't I don't mean to stop anyone from going through that thing. Uh, or, or living that way forever. If you are Richard Stallman, um, do whatever makes you happy. But I think uh, I think I, I personally think that it's healthy to um, to allow yourself to to use all kinds of styles of programming and learn all kinds of languages. And on that note, I really should. Uh, spend more time with uh, functional programming, I think. Um, I need to do that. Anyway, um, those are my answers. So thank you for writing in, Euclid Alexandria. And thank you, everybody else, for tuning in to this car talk. Uh, if you have any questions or topic suggestions or um, whatever, just leave a comment below and we can talk about it. Um, other than that, I will just see you next time. Bye.